Guys, I am back on your screens after a little bit of time away from the weekly news. I had to go and move homes, unfortunately, or fortunately. Unfortunately, to not get the news in, but fortunately, because I'm going to hopefully have a much better life now. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me. I hope you got to see out all the journey on social medias. And of course, if you've been checking out my live streams over on Twitch recently, you would have definitely been keeping up to date with all of that as well. But since we're in a new place, we are also in a new place right now as well. We're in some weird universe dimension. But Today is going to be a feature celebration of BlizzCon, which is celebrating Blizzard Entertainment and its multiple universes. So this is going to be a different type of episode, but there is hours of content jam-packed into, well, a small segment of a little bit, a little couple of minutes anyway. I'm not sure how many minutes yet, but... We will find out. Anyway, thank you very much for sticking with me. Let's get on with the show. Let's get checking what Blizzard have cooking for the next year. Woo! So for the first pit stop tonight, we're going to be checking out the Overwatch universe. So let's get straight to it. Let's go. The first Samoan hero, which is where most of the Overwatch news centered around, is known as Mauga. He's a new tank hero, and Mauga means mountain in Samoan. The announcement leaked early on the Nintendo eShop that day, but it was officially announced that evening at the official BlizzCon with their trailer video. If you look at him closely, which I'm no doubt you are doing right now, he is quite distracting. He will remind you without a doubt of Maui from Disney's Moana. Absolute massive meaty man. You know the gays will be happy and no doubt Rule 34. Now if you don't know what Rule 34 is, either do I. I just happened to put two numbers together and made 34. Don't definitely... Don't go and check that out, guys. Yeah. Mauga dual wheels two large chain guns and has an unstoppable charge attack called Overrun. His secondary ability gives damage reduction to allies and allows them to heal by doing damage. His ultimate chains or even traps all characters down in a small location to fight it out in close quarters. There's also a new PvP mode and map rework coming very soon in 2024 as well. The new mode is known as Clash with the Hanamura map making a comeback in 2024 as the Hanoko map. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but I probably butchered it. There's also two more upcoming characters. We don't know much about these yet, but there is a DPS hero known as Venture, hinted at being the first human hero to use the they or them pronouns. The support hero referred to also to Space Ranger is on its way too, but once again, we don't know much about these besides some concept art. No information or comments were given about the story mode, but are we really surprised? Especially at considering the PvE debacle earlier in the year. Overwatch 2, I'm sure you're getting better little by little, but you still have a long goddamn way to go. For the next pit stop tonight, we're going to be checking out the Warcraft universe and we will be starting with their iconic card game, Hearthstone. And then we're going to jump on then into the world of Warcraft news shortly after that. There is a lot of stuff to get packed here, so let's get straight to it. Woo! Blizzard announced Showdown in the Badlands expansion to their iconic card game based on the Warcraft universe. The game will introduce battleground duos arriving early in 2024 where you and a friend can tag team fight and take down your opponents the game extends a hand to new and or returning players with catch-up packs which are packs of 50 cards based on previously acquired standard expansion cards basically designed to get players into the action quickly with an updated card collection this expansion arrives on november 14th before I go through the announcements, did you know there are now five versions of WoW running at the same time? Let's have a very quick overview of each. Classic Era, the normal classic vanilla experience released in 2019. Classic Seasonal, classic but with a seasonal server. Classic Expansion, currently Wrath of the Lich King, but next Cataclysm. Many thought originally the Classic Era would end with Wrath of the Lich King, as that 
felt like a natural stopping point before Blizzard updated the old world with the launch of Cataclysm. And number four, Classic Hardcore, the original classic experience but with a twist that you get one life, die and it's game over. Originally inspired by a community add-on and released into the WoW repertoire in August 2023 and recently also discussed on this channel in September. And finally, number five, current expansion Dragonflight of the retail part of WoW with the just released final major patch of the expansion with 10.2 with a follow-up smaller epilogue patch or multiple patches sometime in the new year. The hardcore servers will be expanded to a new self-found gameplay option where players can try their luck and skill to get to level 60 without the ability to trade, use the auction house or receive mail. It wasn't clear when I was viewing was this an optional button to press upon character creation or a separate server entirely. It will come to Classic Hardcore in early 2024. Cataclysm was the third WoW expansion out, out of the soon to be 10. Kata saw the world revamped for the first time since launch when the main antagonist Deathwing swooped over the world of Azeroth and changed the world forever. Players joined to take down this gigantic dragon and will be once again in 2024. The dev team noted there will be changes from the original game but did not specify too much at the time. They noted tweaks will be made to include new dungeon difficulties, probably similar to how they changed up the Wrath of the Lich King dungeons which was actually praised by the community. They will be changing the guild progression system a bit and a count-wide transmog system and faster patch cadence on the journey to level 80. I wonder if they will leave out the infamous LFR, looking for raid, a very much contentious topic since its inception in the final major patch of the expansion which saw people getting into an almost tourist mode of raids by clicking on a tool very similar to the LFG looking for group. I guess we shall see. Now some very exciting news with the seasonal servers marks Season of Discovery. Coming at the end of November the second seasonal server is being introduced to Classic with major updates this month. There is no PTR to keep the discovery aspect of the game as intact as possible because as we know, things don't stay secret for long nowadays with the internet. Ruins will be hidden throughout the world which players will be able to find and then they will change how their classes are played. These can be equipped at any time to certain gear slots to grant brand new abilities never seen in WoW before and also iconic abilities from other expansions. These will no doubt bring up huge social interaction on servers, websites, forums and discords alike. Imagine a healing mage for example or an actual tanking warlock in Metamorphosis or even a tanking shaman in Classic. They will start in the chest, legs and hands with more unlocking at high levels. Leveling will also be banded. The max level for phase 1 will be level 25 which culminates in a well-known classic dungeon Black Fathom Deeps being transformed into a 10-man raid with all new boss mechanics and loot. This band will be expanded over time with other dungeons being transformed into raids. And who knows what is planned for level 60. They gave a glimpse even into the catacombs of Karazhan, a very long speculated planned dungeon or raid back in the day. This is more or less the definition of classic plus and the community hope they will expand this as much as possible. This is all very much big, big hype. And now on to WoW Retail, where Chris Metzen took the stage with his amazing storytelling and hype skills after several years away from Blizzard. He announced that the future of WoW will be split into a three-part saga called the World Soul Saga. Effectively, they announced three expansions with a quick story overview of what to expect in each, but did not go into the systems beyond the latest expansion coming out, The War Within, sometime in Fall 2020. 24. The team wanted to span an epic story to celebrate 20 years of World of Warcraft and this expansion will be the monumental 10th. 
in the war within, players will adventure into the depths of Azeroth to take on the Nerubian race, a well-known race from Warcraft 3 and Wrath of the Lich King, and minions of the Void being ushered in by Zalathet, a Void Elf which has come more to prominence slowly since the expansion of Legion. With her rise, she now acts as the Harbinger and sets in motion a new dark legacy. She has recruited the Nerubians by offering their queen, Anserek, a new freedom. Along the way, they will meet a type of dwarven race known as the Earthen, and by the culmination of the main storyline, the Earthen will become playable allied race characters. They wanted to focus on adding evergreen systems to last a span of time, rather than once-off expansion-only features. Four new zones to play through as you progress to the new level cap of level 80, forcing you further and further deeper into Azeroth's depths. Also, as you level to 80, you earn new skills with the Hero Talent system, allowing you to further change your character with 10 talent points to further customize the class archetypes. You gain one point each level from level 71 onwards, you will ultimately unlock all the talents, but you can choose the order along the way that you unlock them, with some choice nodes for a little bit of spice. The expansion will unlock a new content known as Delves, which can be tackled solo or up to five people, which are designed as an alternative to dungeons through seamless integrated world content. Blizzard has tried variations of this before in previous expansions with things like scenarios, Torghast, islands, so the learnings from there may make this the best version yet. Warbands is where your characters share progress and now also take up a seat at a campfire when you log in. You will have a shared bank, achievements and even a way to get loot between the warband easier. Guilds will become cross realms so regardless of server or faction you can play with people. Various UI improvements will also be added such as things to the quest log, spellbook and more. Dynamic flying replaces dragon riding and is expanded to hundreds of mounts so players can change from dragon riding system or the regular flying system on a whim depending on your mood. And as usual with every expansion, new dungeons and raids. Crits Medicine also gave a quick mention and story overview of Expansion 11, Midnight, and Expansion 12, which culminates the saga, The Last Titan. I'm sure I will give more news on these in the future, but these are very much big hype moments and definitely gives WoW a bright future after a couple of years of mediocrity. And on our next pit stop on this adventure tonight, we are going checking out the Diablo universe. What's coming up next for Diablo 4? Well, let's check what the realms of hell are awaiting us. Let's do it. Going live right away is a new boss ladder system that starts at level 55 and continues all the way to level 100 that will include the return of bosses such as Juriel and other bosses that will drop uber unique items. Drop rates have also been adjusted and increased for unique and uber unique drops, as well as some special cosmetics. In order to ensure players are able to get to level 100 faster, a rebalance of experience gain will result in players attaining level 100 40% faster compared to season 1. Item drops and their listed power caps will now be tied to the level of the monster that dropped the item. The more challenging the fight, the better the loot. Renowned rewards will now also carry over from season to season and from the legacy gameplay to all characters on the same account. Goddamn yes. Two more additional character slots. There's also going to be a targeting dummy added to test builds before fighting real monsters. Searching and filters of your stash will now be possible and your stash will be accessible from every town in Sanctuary. World bosses will now spawn roughly twice as often and of course the most highly requested and previously ignored player feedback gems will now be a crafting material no longer bogging down your inventory. Malignant Rings will feature some of the fun from Season 1. Starting on December 5th, a feature called an Enchanting Preview will be added to the Occultist, allowing you to see which affixes are possible before spending your gold. 
Also launching on December 5th will be a six-week in-game event called the Abattoir of Zir that promises highly replayable content for those that have done everything else. Players that finish the event will receive a Paragon Glyph and it is warned it starts difficult and only gets harder. Starting on December 12th, the first ever Diablo holiday event, known as Midwinter Blight, that will bring a touch of the holidays to Sanctuary Diablo style in a winter terrorland and a whole new meaning to the term Sleigh Ride. Coming for Season 3, the details are sparse, but a leaderboard called The Gauntlet that will feature a weekly tally of the highest ranking players, submitting them into a seasonal Hall of Ancients, recording their names and builds for all of eternity. The first Diablo 4 expansion, Vessel of Hatred, features ruins of the city Korost and the blackened temple lost deep in the jungles of Nohantu. Coming late 2024, featuring more of the Lord of Hatred, Mephisto. Additionally, it will also include an all-new class, never seen in the Diablo universe. Current fan speculation on this new class suggests it's a class called the Spiritborn, due to apparent leaked images. But take that with a large grain of salt, as Diablo devs are notorious for trolling the fandom with fake classes. Let us not forget the infamous Archivist and Necrude, class April Fool pranks in the past. And finally, the last pit stop for this evening, we're going checking out a brand new game known as Warcraft Rumble that released on mobile just last week. And in saying that, we're going to be replacing the normal what's coming next with this particular game. So highlight for this game as we're keeping on in the BlizzCon tradition for this episode. So let's go and get Rumbling! So Warcraft Rumble, what the heck is it? Warcraft Rumble is all about defending your base while capturing the opponent's base. There is an extensive campaign featuring locales from World of Warcraft. There is both a normal and heroic mode to each map where the challenge is increased with new twists and a higher level required to play the heroic versions. Players gather minis to play the game. Minis are familiar World of Warcraft heroes and creatures to round out your army. Each army is split into one of five families, Alliance, Horde, Beast, Undead, and Blackrock. Each with multiple leaders and a range of minis where there are currently over 65 with more added every season. Players can join a guild of up to 15 people and take on challenges and gain rewards. Players can also try out dungeons as a solo experience based on classic Warcraft dungeons for additional challenges. Arclight Surge is a solo experience where few levels will be lit up allowing you to replay them with a twist. There will be raids added over time, with Anixia being the first, requiring multiple people to take her down and dubbed as the hardest content in the game thus far. The next raid to be added in a few months is the Molten Core, with the infamous Ragnaros the Fire Lord being the final boss, which can be done in a new co-op mode added around the same time. Seasons will be every six weeks, where a new reward, such as a leader, which is in Season 1, Sylvanas Windrunner, and in Season 2 is a new unit, a Chimera for the Beast family, and seemingly alternating between these each time. These rewards can be got via the guild system or the PvP system. There will be PvP, 1v1, and climb a ladder throughout each season. Each season also provides a different tower and map modifier to keep things fresh. Future features include balance updates, PV updates, and replay mode as well. So let's see what Warcraft Rumble will bring to us in the future. So let's see if any of us here will get rumbling. And with that, that brings us to the end of another episode, episode 8 down, and I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Remember, if you did like all of that information, condensed multiple hours, and helping you without all that research needed, condensing all that down into literally minutes instead of hours. So if you want to check me out more of me, definitely check out that like button. 
check down below and press that lovely subscription button. And of course, if you do want to see more of me, my other different social medias and platforms, that link tree is down below with all that lovely good stuff as well. If you want to support further, check out those links, including Patreon to get your name at the end of these videos. And until then, guys, I hope to see you very, very soon. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Take care. Schlauncher. Thank you.